Okay, uh, let's let's start last presentation. Um, like a uh, bunch of complaints. Uh, I tried to do the presentation about Grab2 security features uh, and uh, its overview. And I found kind of concerning things, but maybe I'm just, you know, I don't know how to use Grab uh, or something. Um, okay. Oh, no, no, there is no agenda. Uh, okay, so let's start with authentication and uh, authorization in Grab. So I just like, kind of took the uh, security uh, part of the manual and tried to reproduce whatever I had there and try to, to use that. Yeah? So this, uh, this feature worked as documented, uh, like not much of the uh, complaints here. Like it's very, very cool. Like of course we have this like very long um, uh, hash of the password. Uh, of course we need uh, to make everything read-only, just like nobody can uh, modify that because it would not make sense. Uh, the, the only minor like kind of things is that when you type uh, password, uh, you, you have no idea what's going on. I, like, if you passed, then maybe you see that system's booting, yeah? That, if, if it's, of, of course, correct boot option. If you failed, you have no idea that you failed because there is no comment, there is no, you can do this forever, you can do this, like, infinitely, uh, do that. Uh, very cool thing is that uh, you can disable, like, by uh, defining super user uh, empty string, you can disable uh, command edit and, uh, uh, and CLI in Grab. So you cannot change during booting process. You cannot change the uh, like boot options. You cannot custom in custom way boot whatever you want. Yeah? So that's very cool. And this is like as explained in manual, this is good for kiosk applications uh, when someone could change something during boot process. So I like this feature. And of course, this feature should be combined with all other security features. Uh, but uh, I see some small improvements needed here, like at least, like, uh, I, I think like whole process is very manual and it may be too sophisticated for, uh, for kind of regular uh, user. Uh, I don't know how this should be simplified. Grab may say like this is like distro stuff, like distro should handle that. But some kind of simplification of whole process should be done. Uh, to make it more friendly and like maybe some error messages. Next is uh, using digital signatures. This was very interesting to me and I, I tried to understand that because this uh, connects with all the approach that we're talking like continue chain of trust and so on and so on. First of all, uh, DSA keys are, are still supported. Uh, not this, but DSA. Um, um, despite the pre being depre deprecated by OpenSSH. So even like using OpenSSH, you, you cannot, uh, uh, I believe you cannot generate uh, uh, those keys. You have to use probably something else. Um, and yeah, and the, the, I try to start, uh, find reasoning behind uh, deprecation of this, but uh, the reasoning is not kind of clear and can be, it's at, uh, like a political discussion probably. Uh, but, you know, still uh, using that may be uh, of maybe some, you know, problematic or may co or, uh, raise some concerns. Uh, yeah, so potentially this could be useful to verify signatures using TPM. Uh, so I believe we, uh, the, the, the definitely there are methods uh, to create your own um, uh, private key and uh, uh, pu private public key pair and, and then verify signatures using TPM. This would be also cool because you don't have to kind of add uh, the public key to your, uh, to grab. Well, I don't know where the public key is kept right now, but uh, you don't have to add it. You should be able to leverage the TPM infrastructure, but it's not implemented at this point and there is no support for that. Um, there is other problem that build process does not support signing. Like it supports, but the the component supports, but whole process do not support. So like um, if you do um, MK image and all this tool, uh, tool set, you can provide minus minus pubkey, uh, and this 
seem to not work. Uh, at, uh, but option is there. Someone uh, thought about implementing that. I tried that, and there are people that tried that also. The, this is the Union Stack Exchange. If you want to learn some points on Stack Exchange, you can answer this question. Um, it doesn't work. Like it, or at least, or maybe we don't understand how it should work. Yeah. So providing minus minus pub key uh, to the MK image uh, does not include this public key into uh, least trusted, uh, which should be the effect, and does not uh, enforce check signature, check, check signature what should happen uh, when using that option. It appears that uh, this feature is also hard to use because, because people try to kind of create something like this, uh, grab to signing extension, uh, where they kind of wrap various steps uh, to make like kind of one command, provide public key, and it does like sign all the modules by itself, sign the kernel. But this has to be run uh, from the operating system, and the operating system may be already all compromised, and so on and so on. So I believe this should be done at build time. And by the way, ideally for our applications, also would be if we can do that uh, during build time. Um, yeah, so this kind of, th there is some bug here, and I, I'm not sure how, where to look for that and what's the problem. And the question is who's using that feature? Uh, because like, if, if it doesn't work, then maybe nobody used that. Uh, so how this can be leveraged? Like what kind of value we can see in this feature? So of course we can continue vboot signature verification uh, when we have um, core boot. Uh, because like this solves the problem of uh, if we have grab config inside the SPI and then grab and the config is uh, verified, uh, the signature of that is verified. I don't know if we can do that. Probably it's possible with Vboot to do that. Then grab can verify um, signature of the kernel loaded and any module loaded. And in that way we are very happy because we can, uh, because we don't have to invent um, int one age and this kind of weird things because we can verify signatures uh, in that way, yeah? Uh, it just by continuing the, this chain of trust. Uh, yeah, so the other issue is this uh, GPL v3, which is more, maybe more appropriate for, for today evening. Uh, and this is not legal meeting. We are not uh, lawyers, so we not exactly know how, what's the, like, What's the real implications here? Uh, but, uh, but according to FAQ uh, that I re read uh, about uh, GPL v3, um, so if we will do even something like that, that we sign the, uh, sign the bootloader, bootloader, we have to provide the private key uh, so anyone can sign and replace the bootloader. Uh, this is of course on demand, so we're just shipping the solution. If we have solution, like assuming that this is not some for some vendor which is hidden and nobody externally use that because that's different situation. If we have solution that is in user product that widely uh, widely available, uh, then uh, those user who who buy them this product can uh, demand uh, this private key so they can replace the bootloader by themselves. Um, but uh, there is other problem uh, that that uh, yesterday I, I thought of. Uh, the, the, the FAQ mentioned that we should provide the key to the device owner. And who's device owner? How we prove device ownership? That's, that's security stuff, like that's trusted computing stuff. And to be honest, it's very complicated manner because if someone steals hardware and came to us, like I need, I need private key for that. And have you got device? Yes, I have device here, yeah? I just, just took this from, from somewhere, yeah? So it's like, uh, hmm, how we prove uh, this is the real owner and how we prove that we can provide the keys to, the, to that person. Mm. Um, yeah, so in, in, wrong, in long run, um, uh, definitely we would like to have also support, no matter how we're signing, because like, definitely signing the modules and signing the kernel and having this secure structure for booting operating system is very important. But there is another uh, case here. Um, maybe this, this problem can be worked around in different way. I, want, I wonder how Insurgo uh, fix that. But uh, 
I think like when we're shipping even this system, which is signed, uh, we can say, okay, it was shipped uh, during the shipping, nobody modified it mal maliciously, this can be verified uh, cryptographically, but then I want to uh, re -own, uh, re own this device and sign everything with my keys. So it would be cool that this feature will, be, will have infrastructure for um, resigning and reprovisioning the platform with, uh, with user key. Uh, Shim. Um, yeah, there seems to very, be very little information on, in Grab Manual about that. Uh, it would be cool if we have like some external references. I, I'm not sure if this is by policy. Uh, there are like very cool uh, um, blog posts and manuals. Even Ubuntu manual is very sophisticated. Debian has also big documentation about uh, Shim and how to use it and how they leverage that. And maybe this is out of scope of, uh, of Grab manual because this is like, uh, we're just giving this infrastructure and distro have to use it uh, as, as they want. But definitely there are some um, best practices, MOK, how to handle that, how to provision the system. And there is no single source, good single source of true, to be honest, how to use Grab feature. Uh, you have to understand deeply what's going on there to be able to leverage that. Um, yeah, and the question is, of course, like, uh, I'm not sure if, it, if we should dive into that because I wonder if it makes even sense to leverage that for core boot platforms. Probably not because, like, maybe if we will have a, a UFI payload in, in core boot and it, this UFI payload would have support for secure boot, then it makes sense. But still, how we will sign everything, how we will, you know, that, that would be a big hassle for us. Yeah, this can be solved. Like, this can be solved in various... Yeah. But th then the question is if this feature can be leveraged and we sh if we should leverage that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have much more. The, the documentation is very tiny. There is Shimlock mentioned it, but to be honest, like I couldn't understand how I can leverage that, how I can test this. Uh, I should go to Ubuntu or Debian documentation, but it was very extensive and I simply didn't have time to kind of analyze that uh, deeply. And, and to be honest, like uh, looking at those documentation, there is, yeah, I, I just skimmed that and I saw that there are still things that are not finished or, or are still in progress, I would say. So, yeah. Okay, me uh, measuring boot components. Uh, unfortunately, only supported uh, uh, on UEFI platforms. Um, and then, of course, we're getting back to the discussion that we had before about int, uh, int1 AH. Um, and uh, we have this uh, um, yeah, so, so the question is who should expose that interface? If we have grab inside the, uh, ins inside the SPI, uh, then of course we have this problem that a core boot should expose this interface if grab is a consumer of that, uh, that interface. If, um, if we assume that the TPM, TPM drivers, TPM drivers inside Grab should talk directly with TPM because there is no infrastructure, there is no EFI infrastructure. So how we can talk if we don't have other interface, then we have to write drivers, then we have problems like uh, there is only one driver in SPI driver in, uh, in Grab or, or LPC may have this TPM Jenny, uh, um, problems since at least on PC engines platforms where we uh, kind of connect over LPC uh, separate module which is TPM, yeah? So this kind of, this, these problems arise when doing measure, measuring boot. Looks, uh, yeah, also there is no official guide. Like I don't know like how to solve that, maybe contribution to documentation or maybe, like the question is if there is any single correct method of doing that. Probably not because there are, there, there are many, but from one side we say there is no one method, but on the other side distributions uh, in installers uh, 
have some best practices to 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 do that, yeah? Because in installer you can you can encrypt at the installation phase, and this is somehow 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 handled. But the problem is, I think that uh, no one leverage TPM in that case. It's always uh, password uh, based encryption, uh, which is kind of also problematic because, in my opinion, this configuration should be first class citizen as strange boot. Uh, this should be first class citizen, and all, like distros should have support for this kind of combination because most platforms coming with uh, 1.2, 1, 1 most platforms coming with 1.2, but new Dell or new uh, some new hardware coming with 2.0, or you have option to enable that in firmware. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but, and then uh, this is this is very trust, trusted grab to related topic, uh, um, and, and the question is how to, like, we definitely have to port that somehow, and I would like to have, uh, I would like to leverage uh, this combination uh, of, of version two security components in all this, uh, from all these projects. Mm, and, and use that in, at least in embedded systems that we have, and maybe in future we can leverage that uh, also through some distributions. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is what we discussed. Uh, yeah, th this is everything we discussed already in Q&A session. Uh, yeah, and the question is how we can handle, but, but you already explained that uh, in situation when further component needs uh, this interface, we just will no, not override this memory and we'll just preserve that memory with this interrupts and then the next component can use uh, those interrupts to, to measure itself. But it is only uh, at the beginning for 1.2 version and 2.0 is kind of questionable and we should think about that. Reproducible builds. Uh, do we have reproducible builds of Grab? Yeah. So that's that's kind of questions uh, question I have. Like I believe, like I don't know, like stable version. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Like, we, did we try it that with co uh, with Coreboot when we building Coreboot? Did we checked? I I. I I, I wanted I to. And that fix something to make make it reproducible builds. So. Question is if anyone tested that. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, this is like a basic thing. Yeah, reproducible builds. Uh, Integration for, for validation frameworks, we already discussed that with FVT, uh, FWTS. So either we can do that uh, through Python support, uh, which is kind of one way of doing things. Uh, FVTS, that's, that's kind of problem. It's in C, then porting that, you know, like can be problematic. Then we have this new approach from UFI, uh, which is UFI testing framework, which is in MicroPython. Maybe maybe we should have MicroPython support in, in Grab. Maybe it would be better uh, to have MicroPython support, which uh, which typically has better hardware support, at least, and it's smaller. It has way smaller footprint. Maybe uh, much easier to manage in long run. Uh, HTTPS. There is no HTTPS booting. There is TFTP uh, booting, which is kind of dated, uh, and I don't know who who. Right now, use TFTP for any reason. Uh, it's like never should be used externally. It should be always in internal network. It can be done by, for for development purposes, but for production purposes, I, I'm not sure. I would be a little bit scary to to use TFTP for production uh, environment. Uh, the question is if there are any plans for that. Uh, did you heard about any plans? Yes. HTTPS, yeah. So interestingly, uh, UFI has, uh, like modern UFI, it was like hype last year, like, whoa, we have HTTPS support, hooray, hooray, hooray. So the question is, uh, 
And the question is if Grab2 can leverage uh, UFI drivers or whatever protocols for, uh, for HTTP, HTTPS. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just, you know, throwing the uh, things. It's like lightning talk, I can say, or uh, overview of the, but I believe like this would make sense, having HTTPS. Uh, yeah, but the problem would be that uh, this would be visible only in very modern UFI uh, versions. And to summarize, uh, yeah, so th in general, security feature is, uh, adoption is very slow. Uh, so we see that, you know, we finally have La Lux plus uh, TPM 1.2, like most people use only that, and that's kind of problem because there are no guides, uh, seem like adoption across the projects. So, so m there is maybe support here, maybe support there, maybe support there, but uh, kind of there is no integration across those, uh, those elements. So when uh, Trench was saying uh, DRTM should be first class citizen in all projects, the same uh, problem is with, uh, with other security features because there is just no integration across the system. Um, yeah, so some, some, uh, some distros already uh, simplify some things like uh, disk encryption during setup. Uh, yeah, I wish we think that uh, security should not be just available to the user which are technically savvy. This is like unfair and like kind of like security should be easy for everyone and not kind of like rocket science that nobody can implement that. Uh, because like if we create barriers to enter, then we cannot complain that, that people not using security. You know? so, um, yeah, so it would be a cool idea to leverage some funding maybe uh, for that. I believe like, I'm, like we already have experience with that. Like we didn't get anything, but we already applied for some funding from some uh, some open source funds or some uh, like funds that support open source development. It may be cool to like I think they would be interested in that. Maybe applying uh, for uh, Google Summer of Code, uh, some projects uh, you know to get. Of course, of course, this depends on the maintainers, on someone who cares. Uh, who will spend time on verifying, uh, for example, work of the students. Uh, this is like a lot of work, yeah? But who knows, maybe uh, this would be good for, for some corporate agenda. Mm. Yeah, so in, in, ca in case of 3M Depot, I can say like at this point, whatever is aligned with our goals, business goals, we plan to push forward uh, and maybe uh, the, the business goals will be itself like if we can get some funding uh, but this means, of course, we have to spend quite a lot of time preparing that and, you know, there have to be some person behind that because always this funding requires, okay, so uh, there have to be some external entity who will say, okay, this is fine, we can merge it and, and then we approve it, it's working uh, and something like that, yeah? And this can be, can be only one person, typically this is like a, some board. And that's all what I wanted to say. Thank you.